Magnificent, Parker. Good morning. Welcome to Kingsway. My name is Dr. Rick Westfall, and we are so glad you are with us today that you have joined us either here in the congregation or online. Whether this is your first time or you're a regular attender, would you please take time enough to fill out our Connect card? As the name implies, this card helps us connect you to the things that will be of interest and are important to you. There's also a space for you to list any joys or concerns or to request prayer. At the very least, write your name and identify the service that you are attending. When the offering plate comes around, if you would simply place the card and the pen in that plate. Those of you who are online, please do go ahead and register with us each week. We are hiring at Kingsway. We have a job opening, and we would like to invite you or any of your friends or loved ones to consider applying for our team. Are you passionate about teaching, loving, and caring for children? Do you click with parents of young children in ways that foster a deep sense of community and inclusion? Do you have great ideas for events, opportunities, and lessons that help children grow in their love of God and of others? You might be perfect for our children and family director role. This full-time, flexible opportunity is responsible for our children and family discipleship ministry. If you're interested in applying to this uh, role or would like to explore other possibilities, please contact us online. The online application um, is on our website at kwumc.com forward slash employment. For questions, please email administrator at kwumc.com with the subject line, children and family director role. And finally, I know many of us are glad that the Wednesday night dinners have returned. February 1st, we will kick off Wednesday night dinners again. These dinners are an opportunity for congregants to break bread, to have fellowship, and to prepare for the Wednesday night programs and uh, opportunities at 6 p.m. Dinners this semester are once a month with a special second uh, dinner in February before Ash Wednesday. We hope this reduced frequency will make the meals a little more special. The cost for the meal is $7 for adults and $4 for children. That's grades five and younger. There's also a special rate for families with three or more children of $25. You do not need to RSVP and cash or check payments will be accepted. If you're interested in volunteering or if you'd like more questions about the Wednesday night dinners, please reach out to Zoe Russell at hospitality at kwumc.com or call the church at 417-881-6363. Now, if you would join me and as we continue our worship, we invite you to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, for our call to worship. Our God is a God of majesty and awe. You have made us in your image. We are precious in your sight. Our God is a God of glory and wonder. God loves each of us with tenderness and passion. Our God calls us each by name. God calls each of us to unite, unite in and worship, worship together. together. Welcome, it is, indeed in good, it is indeed good to be in community this morning. I encourage you to remain standing in body or in spirit and feel free to spread God's peace to those around you.
If you'll remain standing in body or in spirit, we'll sing together our opening hymn. It is hymn 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. Karen Hayden, one of the pastors here, and we come to a time in our worship service where we connect with God and connect with one another in prayer. Today, we connect our hearts in grief and joy as we remember your needs, the needs of our community, and the prayers of all God's people. As we pray, today I share some specific needs of Kingsway. A need of lay staff, otherwise known as volunteers, otherwise known as companions with children and youth on their journey with God. Oh no, I don't teach children the Bible. I don't know the difference between Job and Job one parishioner once told me as his excuse for not to be a participant with our children. 
And if you think journeying with youth and children is all about teaching them the Bible, well, I would say a biblical scholar isn't the highest priority of the job description. Perhaps your willingness to grow with our children is the highest priority. Who in here knows Mrs. Jane Medlin? A special volunteer with our children. She likes to say most of what she learned about God and God's teaching began with her time in a Sunday school class assisting high schoolers with great questions in Mountain Grove. See, volunteering here isn't just about you teaching. It might also be that you're a great greeter and that you can stand between the doors and welcome parents and children. Or maybe your gift is shepherding and you watch another person teach while you just make sure all the kids are where they're supposed to be. There are all kinds of needs in our children's area and if you would like to volunteer, reach out to children at kwumc.com for us to connect with you. In the absence of a children's director, someone is monitoring that email so you will be connected. Youth need someone to hang out with them too, especially on R&R on Wednesday nights. So my question is, do you like snacks? Do you like to hang out? Well, a few more adults are needed for connection to make this a safe and welcoming space for our youth. On Wednesday night, it is a night of fellowship and study for them, catching up on homework and just hanging out. And we are moving into the season of confirmation and this Wednesday, Bree and I are with the confirmation and she'll have a lot of energy focused there until April. So if you're willing to keep R&R &R going, offering your time on Wednesdays from six to seven, reach out to Bree at students at kwumc.com. It's only five days, they said, according to Rance Berger when they called him to chaperone a youth trip, and that was 10 years ago, and he's still going. He says he needed more time with the very best people he's ever met. Want to join a team of volunteers for summer mission or retreats? Again, you can see Bree. There's rotational systems available, or you can go 10 years, your choice. As we think about these things today, I think about how I stood here a couple of months ago reminding us of the need in our community for cold weather crisis meals and uh, Kingsway is doing that every Saturday now. Our music ministry represented us last night there in serving meals and I'm thankful for the different groups that have done that over uh, the past month and we go until March the 25th. So if you're an individual that says, I'd like to team up with another group, um, we can help you with that if you call our church office. We take these things. We take those who are comfortable coming to church and know God. We take the prayers of those who don't yet know the story of Jesus or those who are very uncomfortable coming to church for whatever reason. And we remember God's call upon us to care for the least and the last and the lost as we care for ourselves. May we pray together. God, when we say the words, it is great to be in community, we give thanks for our communion with you, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the love, guidance, and comfort that you give us. As we follow Jesus, we think about our roles to care for others as you would have us do. God, sometimes there are big signs in front of us about how we are to do that. And sometimes it comes because of a nudge 
from the Holy Spirit or from another person where we finally take notice. Maybe it comes in other subtle ways and maybe we just have to keep praying to hear your small voice. Today, as I pray with this congregation holding its many and own griefs and joys, we give thanks that you hear us, God. We're not so far away from Christmas that we don't remember how you made yourself available to us to know us and know the needs of humanity personally. We also remember, God, how you are able to conquer death and give us life. We pray as we journey together, sometimes strong, sometimes wobbling along, but we pray knowing that sometimes our journey is just journeying together offering bread to one another as we make our way home. Be with us in this time together today that it may nourish us in our walk forward. We pray this in Jesus' name who taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are fully staffed with lay volunteers today, and I remind us that uh, we have two hours dedicated to children each week. If it is your desire to take a child there, now we invite you to do so, or just know that is available for our children.
Is there a time in your life where you consider the grace that has carried you? Where if it were not for grace, you don't know how you would have gone forward? Grace appears in so many ways. Grace appears in so many ways in a church. Some of that is through those who say, I support this church with my time, my talents, my treasures. I will learn how to run the pro presenter system by pushing a button and making sure that video appears on this screen. I got some cheers from up there, silent cheers. It happens when people pray for one another. It happens when people volunteer. I love to list the different ways, small and big, that I have seen provenient grace happen. Provenient grace is a, a word that um, is, is thick in Methodist language. That idea that uh, grace is coming at us, preparing us for something we don't yet know. If you read my weekly update this week, you read a moment about Provenient Grace in the introduction of our new associate pastor, pastor of Discipleship Ministries. John Millen began this week um, as a part of our staff. You don't see John right here this morning, even though he's been here, because John um, came to us um, as, as a new person in our conference and in our state, um, as his wife Lisa accepted a job here in July. But John was a pulpit supply in Iowa and then arrived here and met our district superintendent about October. Remember anything else that happened in October? Our former associate was leaving and John met with our associate and um, began a role as a pulpit supply in another local church here in the Springfield area, not Springfield proper. And um, we have worked it out that he will be preaching there until March the 1st, part-time here, and then will um, assume full-time responsibilities. So his job today is preach, finish up, make the 25 minute drive here um, so that he might be able to greet some of you when you're leaving this morning. I don't know, we'll see. But we are excited about that and I will be excited for you to meet John as time um, moves on. This morning, when I named how one learned from children to enhance her own discipleship, I am reminded about how we pass on information generation to generation. Two decades ago, a fascinating study was done among United States youth that became known as the National Study of Youth and Religion. It's something that our discipleship team from children on up has discussed. Perhaps you have heard the phrase moralistic therapeutic deism, the acronym MTD for short. MTD is not a new theology or religion, but a set of spiritual beliefs labeled moralistic therapeutic deism. The idea that we're moral, that God wants us to behave, therapeutic, God wants people to be happy and well-adjusted, and deism, the idea that there is a God, but God made the world and then left it alone. God isn't personally involved in the everyday lives of people. The most important thing, according to MTD, is to be good, be nice, be tolerant, and God will ultimately receive you into heaven. 
This view is probably held by a lot of Americans and seems to be coming the dominant civic religion, which emphasizes horizontal relationships with other people, but minimizes a relationship with God. Ken DeCreasy Dean, author of Almost Christian, what the faith of our teenagers is telling American churches notes, the problem doesn't seem to be that churches are teaching young people badly, but we're doing an exceedingly good job of teaching youth what we really believe. Namely, that Christianity isn't a big deal, that God doesn't require much, and that the church is a social institution filled with friendly people. On the surface, MTD doesn't sound that bad, does it? Producing happy, moral people sounds like a worthy goal, except that MTD puts humanity at the center ultimately each individual at the center of his or her own belief system. God desires so much more from us than good behavior and temporal happiness. Jesus came into the world to redeem creation. Well-behaved and well-adjusted people weren't Jesus' goal. God's plan, its ultimate, utter transformation, is not just of humanity being good, but it is a transformation of creation as a whole. And we know that requires some responsibility. A reintroduction to the idea that there is sacrifice involved in our partnership with God, the idea that we pick up a cross and follow Jesus. For children and adults alike, transformation happens when we say, we are broken. We need guidance. We can't do this on our own. We need, a, we need direction from an active God who loves us and teaches us more. Our call is centered around that Jesus came to have relationship with us, interceded on our behalf of taking our sins and dying on the cross. And when Jesus died and rose from the dead, he defeated sin and death forever. But that is not the end. We are called into continued relationship. In our relationship with Jesus, we are a part of a kingdom far greater than the world can see. Jesus teaches us that faith is something that God has done for us and faith is a response to love lived out. So discipleship comes down to this. Jesus sends us into the world to practice the way of Jesus and to embody, manifest God's mission. The lesson we learn from our years of MTD is that it's not so important that disciples have affection for a divine genie or a cosmic bellhop. It matters how we act, how we live out what our Lord has taught us. And sometimes we use the word faith when we talk about our intellectual and emotional disposition and forget that Jesus also includes action as a part of the definition of faith. So today we ask, how can we move from MTD to meaningful action? And perhaps it starts with humility, our humility in relationship to God and one another. Ah, humility. 
Bishop Latrell Miller Easterling says of our series, Created to Love, at the genesis of creation, our creator had a vision for the cosmos. Our creator breathed into existence a symbiotic unity of harmony birthed in divine crucible of humility, justice, and shalom. And our creator realized that it was not good for there to be singularity. Therefore, God created humanity and community. Those communal beings were given the responsibility to cultivate, nurture, and increase the blessings God bestowed upon the earth. They dwelt in simplicity without competition. They dwelt in a covenant of trust and cooperation. And it was good. It was very good. Humanity walked the garden with God and there was unity and abiding peace. It wasn't until self-interest, self-importance, self-absorption rose above all else that the sacredness of the garden was shattered. Our sin, egotism, later destroyed the equilibrium of creation. That egotism, the habit of valuing everything only in reference to our personal reference, has caused human, humanity to fracture and accept a narrative antithetical to the very nature of our Creator. It creates the false reality that there is any separation among us and there is any hierarchical worth to our be being that one group of persons is superior to another. We hear that story now from the book of Genesis. Join me in the first chapter of Genesis found at the beginning of your pew Bible. You may find Genesis 1 in your personal Bible on an app or on the screen now. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God brought forth light and separated it from darkness. God commanded a dome between water, sky, land. There was place living creatures. God made every one of them. Then God looked at what God had done and called it good. Then in chapter 1, verse 26, we read, God said, now we will make humans and they will be like us. We will let them rule the fish, the birds, and all other living creatures. So God created humans to be like himself. He made men and women. God gave them his blessing and said, have a lot of children, fill the earth with people and bring it under your control. Rule over the fish in the ocean, the birds in the sky and every animal on earth. I have provided all kinds of fruit and grain for you to eat. And I have given the green plants as food for everything else that breathes, including animals, both wild and tame, and birds. And so it was. God looked at what he had done. All of it was very good. Evening came, then morning. It was the sixth day. For the gift of scripture, thanks be to God. The creation story in Genesis tells us that God called us to live in community. In your bulletin today, you will find our United Methodist Social Principles that remind us, community provides the potential for nurturing human beings into the fullness of their humanity. Underline that. Go write a journal entry on that later. Wow, the power. Community provides the potential for nurturing human beings into the fullness of their humanity. Our coming together reveals God. That's beautiful. Primary for us is the gospel understanding that all persons are important because they are human beings created by God and loved through and by Jesus Christ and not because they have merited significance. Just as we are God's beloved, our neighbors are God's beloved. And yet too often we find ourselves tempted with competition. We find ourselves separated from our neighbor. 
Our Created to Love series asks how we might be transformed into a rhythm of renewal. We are called to see all humanity in the way Jesus does and to embrace the power of repentance. In one of Jesus' final prayers, in his last hours before his crucifixion in John 17, we find Jesus praying for our coming together. Just as the Trinity is one, might God's children be one, he prayed. What a powerful image. And yet, like today's scripture, we remember we don't always get it right. Often our focus on selves gets in the way of God's divine order, God's plan for unity. Less than three hours away from here, and 100 years ago, we have an example about how self-interest and false narratives of separation and racism get in the way of our created order. In 1921, the Greenwood neighborhood was a bustling mecca on the fringes of Tulsa. During the great oil booms of the 1900s, many African Americans moved across Tulsa in hopes of economic opportunity. Over the following two days, much of the local black population settled into Greenwood. This relocation of black professionals led to a sophisticated, highly educated and prosperous black community. This thriving community included a school system, hotels, cafes, and modern homes. As the oil industry continued to expand, opportunity for the black persons increased. And over time, many black workers were reaching for the American dream and were met with hostility. And soon, false accusations were put on many black men. Amid all of this tension was a 19-year-old male accused of a crime downtown at an office building. He was arrested and taken to the courthouse. The white community demanded justice. The black community gathered to ensure justice. A few shots were fired and the black citizens fled back to the Greenwood neighborhood. The next morning, all civility broke loose as Greenwood homes and businesses were looted. A massacre followed the next two days. Over 300 black persons were murdered. It would be 80 years before this massacre was acknowledged by the American government or the state of Oklahoma. And it was more than 90 years later, in 2013, that Tulsa Chief of Police initiated a formal apology from the Tulsa Police Department. It said, I cannot apologize for the action and inaction and dereliction that those individual officers and their chief exhibited during that dark time. But as your chief today, I can apologize for our police department. I'm sorry and distressed the Tulsa Police Department did not protect its citizens during those tragic days in 1921. In her book, Be the Bridge, Latasha Morrison reminds us acknowledgments such as that police chief should lead us to lament. Acknowledgments leads us towards seeking mercy, towards a collective conviction that we can and must do better. Willful ignorance of facts, willful bias and prejudice keep us away from awareness that can lead to lament. They keep us from moving into the hard work of racial reconciliation, and from there we move to repentance goal is transformation. Repentance is a part of transfer, transformation. When we confess, yes, it requires humility. It requires deep vulnerability. 
It requires a confession of our sin, acknowledgement, and a desire to move past it, a desire to move past shame and guilt. And when confession may sound risky, consider the risk of not confessing for our community's sake, because sin disrupts God's order. As followers of Jesus, we want to lift up the image of God in our brothers and sisters. Until we confess that we have denied that image from time to time, from group to group, person to person, we will never be free ourselves. Jesus commands disciples to be witnesses by spreading the gospels to all nations. God re relies on followers to share their faith not by being just good, but by telling others what Jesus in their life, how that makes a difference. And so today we acknowledge the power of story, the power of our humility, so we can get to know more about one another and get along by honoring the image of God in every human being. And we return to MTD. How do we move beyond simple kindness to our neighbors to offer radical love and transformation and systematic change in a broken world? If anybody should be having these conversations, who should it be, if not the church? As instructed by Jesus and enabled by the Holy Spirit, we are a healing agent. The church is a healing agent. And so we ask, how do we make things better our work in race and culture helps us to become a place for people from diverse cultures and generations so that ultimately we become a church for all God's people. We are created to love, not to tear down and divide. What does Kingsway's place in our community offer in Jesus' name concerning reconciliation, unity, and true love? God, give me a clean heart that I might serve you. Give me a transformed mindset that I might witness for you. Give me the courage to own my whole story and will join it with yours. Because you created me to love as Christ love, may your will be done. Amen. We are called into continued relationship. In our relationship to Jesus, we are a part of a kingdom that is far greater than the world can see. What might our act of sharing and doing offer in Jesus' name? As we share now our gifts or, or even just consider our gifts as the offering plates are passed, if this is your first time here, your presence is a gift. And as active disciples, the rest of us consider how it is we share in God's name. However we give, we remember your gifts and give thanks. Amen.
standing in body or in spirit, we'll sing together hymn 561, Jesus United by Thy Grace. our presence, our gifts, our service, and witness here at Kingsway, our paths to discipleship are lifted up by our participation in worship, small groups, our service, our mentoring. And when we come today to welcome others, um, I look at those who have a past here, Eric um, and his fiance. Catherine, as they come to join us together, we see Catherine, or hear Catherine's witness sometimes more than see. Um, I give thanks for um, your intentionality and consideration in joining the church 
And as you come today to share um, of your gifts and offer yourself as a witness here, we ask, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? All of us then remember our gifts and our commitment to the church through membership. And I commend Eric and Catherine to your love and care that these persons whom we day, this day receive into the membership of this congregation do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We rejoice to recognize you as members of Christ's Holy Church and bid you welcome in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. And with God's help, we will order our lives after the example of Christ, surrounded by steadfast love, that you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Welcome. Glad to have you. It is good to be in community. Sometimes we're leading and sometimes we are being led by others in the community and so we go forth this day celebrating the gift we have in the community of faith. Amen.